Well, greetings, Pastor Eric from Zion Lutheran Church, beautiful Redmond. It is good to be with you on day 12. We're looking at the sixth sign of Jesus in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 9. So if you take your Bibles and open to that, you'll see that the, 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 it's a long story. Um, here, especially in this story, you'll begin to see how John takes a picture of this time and just unfolds everything that goes on with it from the initial encounter to the scribes and the Pharisees and, and, and everyone interpreting what happened to this, um, to this man. It's a fascinating story. Let me read chapter 9. As he walked the line, as he walked along, he saw a man born blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with some of the saliva and spread the man's on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. We're going to stop there now at the beginning of the story, just a, kind of the, just the facts, ma'am. And what we see as we go through there, John 9 is actually, it, it's almost some comic relief in the middle of, uh, of the gospel because if you look at the flow of John chapter 9, um, it's a man born blind from birth and it kind of evolves to hearing what everybody thinks of this man. It's a story of how Jesus heals him. So we see what the parents think, what the disciples think, what the Pharisees think, what the crowd thinks, what the man thinks. And in a sense, up until the end, they're all blind because they don't see what's happening there. What's happening is that the glory of God might be revealed. And then there was belief at the end. Remember John 20, verse 30. These are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that having um, life in him, you might have life in his name. So you look through the chapter, uh, maybe read it before tomorrow. The disciples are blind. Um, the parents are blind. The Pharisees are certainly blind. The, the crowd is blind. Everybody pretty much in the whole chapter except Jesus is blind as a bat. They can't see things spiritually. And that's what this chapter starts to crack open a little bit. <clears throat> How people can start to see spiritually instead of what is just right there before them. Um, this is a, a, a great chapter that kind of tells us what, what can happen in your life and my life when we begin to see things spiritually when we begin to look at things through God's eyes and not our immediate interpretation. So you see Jesus and his disciples walking along and they see a man who's been born blind. The disciples have a question. So Jesus, there has to be a cause of this, either his parents or he did. It's kind of an either or. They weren't seeing spiritually right then because it was an either or they weren't seeing a third way which is god's way of kind of transcending our understanding and giving it to us in a new kind of way um so who sinned this man or or his parents you can understand why his parents might have sinned maybe his mom drank too much wine uh you know when he was in utero or something like that but why would they think that the man who was in utero, he was born blind, so he must have um, sinned in utero. Actually, some of the rabbis at Jesus' time taught that you could actually sin in your womb 
and in the womb and if you sinned in the womb you would bear that punishment when you were delivered well of course that's ridiculous it's not um, in any way true um, so it must have been the parents they must have done something terrible what's interesting is that the disciples this is the first sign of their blindness or in this story it is when they looked at the man instead of looking at him with compassion like Jesus did they looked at him as a case study instead of looking on him as someone to help compassionately they saw someone to talk about right um, the difference with Jesus is that every time he meets someone he engages with them individually there's crowds all over but Jesus engages in the Gospel of John again and again individually with people so Jesus says neither neither this man sinned nor his parents said he was born blind um, but rather Jesus said it's that God's glory might be revealed it's kind of a hard thing to understand really but we'll see by the end of the story God's glory is revealed through the healing of the man born blind and all of the the blindness that is happening all over Jesus says I am the light of the world we'll look at that at what is at one of the I am statements but here everybody is blind and yet Jesus stands as the blight as the light of the world and at the end of the story the man comes to believe in Jesus that's the whole structure of this chapter um, the blindness and then the coming to faith so Jesus does miracles like this really only to show his glory and his character and his love Jesus wants to show people how much he loves them how much he has compassion for them why is this man sick Jesus says here's why so that my glory coming from God might be revealed in him um, so Jesus takes spits on the ground we'll talk about that tomorrow makes some kind of clay and puts it on a man's eyes okay now think of that it's an interesting symbol this spit this water this 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 spirit of God that spit into the ground and made mud mud throughout the Bible clay is a symbol of our humanity when we were made in the first place God take put dust from the ground and created a human um, other places God says God is the potter and we are the clay we're the ones who are molded we're clay pots Paul talks about that in the second Corinthians some of us are cracked pots crack pots but we're still clay pots Jesus says you are one that I can touch and heal and change your life take that clay put it in your hand and your eyes and there will be a new creation go to the pool of Siloam wash it off and you will be able to see now um, what's interesting is that there's just this strange use of totally ordinary stuff that makes this miracle miraculous and again Jesus does what had happened all the way through the Bible just ordinary things that become extraordinary God says Moses I want you to part the Red Sea Moses says how am I going to do that he says see that stick you got in your hand will hit the water with it right God well he does that and then the water parts um, the stone rolled away in Jesus tomb there's all kinds of things Jesus taking uh, uh, water pots changing it into wine Joshua saying let's let's what do you say we play the trombones and walk around the city and then the walls will be falling down and they go right but uh, nonetheless all of that happens that's how the spiritual insight of this story comes into play when God starts with something ordinary around us but relies on our ordinary obedience to do what he's asking us to do so we'll talk more about that tomorrow about the crowds that were around him how they were just blind as a bat not able to see and even the man 
begins <coughs> not only to physically see, but see more and more about who it is, Jesus, who healed him. So this whole story is the dawning of understanding of who Jesus did in this sixth sign where the man finally believes at the end, even though at the beginning he didn't profess faith, he just was healed by Jesus. So we're going to pray the uh, Jesus calling from April 20th. I'll read that. It says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Hear me saying, peace be still to your restless heart. No matter what happens, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let that assurance soak into your mind and heart until you overflow with joy. Though the earth give way, though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, you shall not fear. The media, the media relentlessly proclaims bad news for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A steady diet of their fare will sicken you. Instead of focusing on fickle, ever-changing news broadcasts, tune in to the living Word of God, the one who is always the same. Let Scripture, like we've been doing, saturate your mind and heart, and you will walk steadily along the path of life. Even though you don't really know what will happen tomorrow, you can be absolutely sure of your ultimate destination. God says, I hold you by my right hand, and afterwards I will take you into glory. Good word from Sarah Young on Jesus Calling. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. You take care, and we'll talk. Read through the second part uh, after those first nine verses or so, and read through the rest of, of, of chapter 9 and just see all of the stuff, all of the arguments that are going on there until we see how the blind man eventually did believe. You take care till tomorrow. Bye-bye.